Hello, I'm Susan Nash, and I'm here today to like introduce you to Ian Wild, who is a Moodle developer and 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 a, a, an instructional designer, instructional technologist, and I'm just so excited to have you today as a guest. So welcome, Ian. Well, thank you for having me. Thanks, Susan. So uh, one of the things that that's just like top of mind is the idea that Moodle 4.0 is out. So just to 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 like uh, jump onto that wave of excitement. <laughs> Can you tell tell us a little bit about what you like about Moodle 4.0? What I like about it um, from a usability point of view is the fact that, well, it is a slight criticism and it's one that I've heard a lot. And that is that uh, Moodle 3X was beginning to look a bit old fashioned. And I think uh, one of the things that you see immediately when you start using it how, is how fresh it looks. And of course, uh, beyond that, um, and I think you and I have had this conversation, haven't we, Susan? It's it's not just the look for somebody who's sighted, but it's, it's accessibility um, features that are built in as well. Um, so yeah, it's a fresher look, I think. Um, from a development point of view, uh, one of the things that I have been quite uh, pleased to see is that bar one or two changes to um, APIs, uh, there isn't that much of an overhaul that we'd have to make um, when we move from Moodle 3X to Moodle 4 from a developer's point of view, uh, because that's one of the things that always makes me suck air through teeth when a new version comes along is how much work we have to put into uprate and upgrade all of our plugins but uh, so far I've, I've been quite pleased so so yes yeah, so I think that's the first thing is the look of the thing it looks a lot fresher. Oh that's great and yet from my point of view I think in terms of having students actually succeed I like the dashboard because if somebody's trying to do their course which they do try to do part of it with their phone and part of it with their laptop or on a little tablet the dashboard pops up and says, okay, this is due, this is what you need to be doing, and you just click on it and it takes you there. I think, yeah, you, you, you make a very good point. Um, and I think the thing about having, gosh, um, I remember uh, when we first did our management training and it, and it was all about making sure that all the succinct points you put so that they at the top of your email, the top of your page, so that they fit on a tablet, because that's going to be the, the portal, the stage on which people will be reading your missives. And when it comes to teaching, the same thing applies really, doesn't it? If you've got that stage, and I think Moodle 4, regardless of what stage you've got, be it your mobile, which um, I was doing a fair amount of online tuition uh, during the pandemic, and students uh, here, I'm based in Scotland, so students here where, where they were accessing their course materials would often be on a, on a mobile um, uh, rather than on a, uh, uh, well, in fact, I'm on a laptop, but rather on a larger screen. Um, so, yeah, so I think Moodle uh -huh. definitely makes um, handling those different screen sizes a lot more straightforward and it, and it also uh, is a lot neater as well so it's just a fresher look and that's an out of the box Moodle as well that I'm referring to so no special theme uh, theming work. Yeah, it, that's true I mean that's just with like even the, the out of the box or the um, Moodle dot, Moodle cloud dot com where it has as just the basic um, the, the basic themes and then one of the things too, I just love how fresh and clean it looks for quizzes, choice, you know, all the different multiple choice types of things. Absolutely. And I think um, uh, in terms of that journey as a learner, uh, uh, well, and an instructor, so as an instructor or a learner, coming through from uh, logging into the platform through the dashboard and then through your content, it's one of the things that just thinking back to the issues, not necessarily with Moodle, but one of the issues that my students were having is being able to find their content and find the right uh, worksheets. Um, I should say in Scotland, uh, secondary students, uh, they, schools, uh, are using Teams and uh, teachers are uploading, I don't, because I don't work in school, but um, teachers are using uh, Teams as a way, not only of talking to uh, students, but also for uploading worksheets that they can have. Oh, right, right. 
and and I know it's kind of um, um, partly how as an instructor you structure where you put your uh, materials uh, and less so to do with the medium through which it's transferred to um, but yeah I, I did notice uh, uh, some of my students struggling to find their worksheets and their help sheets and <laughs> grabs from the from the interactive board oh, um, absolutely so and I think uh but again you know I, I that's not wishing to be unkind to teams teams isn't really geared for that kind of uh teaching presentation which of course Google is that's what it's designed for well, um, so, yeah. and, and you bring up a good point I mean to me one big downside in Google is that it is people want to use it as a as a content manager, but I would not advise that because you're limited in in, in your space. So you almost have to link out. You just have to make sure that all the permissions are built in so that mm. that you don't have to go through another authentication <laughs> to get. Yeah, absolutely. That's something because for my work, um, uh, even though I used to teach well. Uh, I can give you a bit of a uh, bit of a, uh, my background, if you like. Yes, please do. I was just going to ask you. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I, yeah, I always say to people um, uh, who ask me you know, about my career, uh, the easiest thing to do is just to Google me. So if you Google Ian Wilde, uh, W-I-L-D, as in nature, and Moodle, <laughs> you'll find out all about me. But essentially, I started uh, working in industrial research and development. Um, and then it was there really um, that I became interested and had the opportunity to start uh, coding and developing. Um, and then I moved off into coding full time. Um, and eventually, cutting a very long story short, which you can all do, um, uh, I ended up teaching and uh, I worked as a private tutor mainly as a, as a teacher. Um, and uh, the thing that I wanted to do was to provide some value added for uh, my tutoring firm. And um, through a close friend of mine at the time, uh, he had a project where uh, it was a pilot project for the uh, fire service. Uh, down in England, so I'm based in Scotland, but down in England, and uh, they were using Moodle, and it was a Moodle 1.5, 1.6-ish. Oh my goodness. Um, um, and, uh, you know, it must be about sort of mid noughties I suppose, so 2005, six, something like that, can't remember. Um, and that's when I first encountered Moodle, and um, yeah, and of course, gosh, the, the light bulb went on above my head then um, for some of the interesting things that we could do with uh, teaching with Moodle and it's math. That's the thing I teach. Um, uh, oh, nice. Uh, math and physics are the, are the two, two specialisms. So I'm a physicist by profession. And um, and I got involved in, gosh, it's been a fascinating journey with Moodle. Um, so um, uh, certainly for um, our publishers, because we share a publisher, uh, our publishers, I wrote the Moodle, I think it's Moodle 19, I'm looking this way um, because there's a bookshelf there. Uh, so yeah, so Moodle 19 Math um, and, uh, and in fact, uh, one of the systems that's mentioned in there for teaching math with Moodle and into it's integrating Maxima, which is a, um, um, a computer algebra system with oh. Moodle. The, the, uh, the lead of that is uh, I bumped into in, in, in the centre of Edinburgh uh, because he's now working at Edinburgh University. Um, so it's quite a small world, isn't it, when we, uh, it comes to... Um, uh, well, education well, and Moodle, so we all we all know each other. So there's a lot of yeah, transfer I, yeah. of information and this kind of thing. So, yeah, I totally agree with you, and I, and I really like what you're saying because we we end up like learning from each other and having a small world. But but when you talked about teaching math and physics, that's one of the big big challenges in in any kind of online. And so I was just wondering how do you go about doing your course design and instructional design so that it's effective? That's a, gosh, that's a really good question. 
um, and I'm staring out into the middle distance, um, pondering, <laughs> pondering about this. Um, well, I suppose for mathematics in Scotland, the, um, the, the, the SQA they're called, so the, the Scottish uh, Qualifications Authority, the syllabus, so the learning, um, um, uh, the learning objectives uh, are very tightly laid out. So they map uh, quite well to, quite well, very well, uh, to um, uh, Moodle uh, competencies. So there's a competency framework there already for you. And um, in terms of lessons, because it's private tuition that I give, it's, it's usually um, kind of, it's usually a student who would come to me with a particular uh, problem uh, that they're having with their learning. Uh, so it's usually a blockage, confidence, what can we say? And so online, what I would do is through Moodle. So I, I, I'm fortunate enough to be able to run my own Moodle with um, a big blue button. So, um, yeah. and that's before Moodle 4 uh, had, the, had the plug in with it. Um, so with big blue button, uh, what I could do was uh, have that as a uh, online class. Obviously, we're talking through Zoom now, but have that through Big Blue Button. Have it recorded. I would use an, uh, another shelf this side, a um, uh, tablet. Okay. Um, and so draw on the screen and record that. Then be able to share that with the student in Moodle um, and any other... Um, um, Kind of uh, questions that I needed to ask, or um, uh, any worksheets that I had, or and in fact, even down here on this bookshelf, down here, uh, it's um, just picking one at random, uh, um, taking a textbook and then yeah. scanning in a bit, uploading it to Moodle. So very simple in terms of my planning. I've kind of slid off your question slightly, Susan, which is which is how would you plan up front? One of the things I wanted to do, um, which I, I have to confess, I didn't uh, get the opportunity. So I started, but I didn't really finish. And that is to uh, create a question bank of questions geared for the Scottish curriculum that students could then take as independent learners. And the re and I'm saying this, relating this tale with a smile on my face, because I, I uh, mentioned about uh, bumping into uh, a, a guy. Uh, I'll name him. Uh, I'll cite him, Chris Sanguin, uh, who uh, is the lead on a project called Stack uh, for creating um, uh, uh, creating um, or integrating rather a computer algebra system into into Moodle. Um, amongst other platforms. Um, his, his guys had put that together already. So they created an entire set of questions. Um, and, the, and the beauty about the computer algebra system that, that, that they've created is that it, it guides you through and it marks automatically. And, and of course, you know, 3x plus, uh, plus 2 is exactly the same as 2 uh, as uh, two plus 3x or whatever I said. So it doesn't matter which way around you have it. That system deals with all of those complexities for you. Uh, just thinking of quizzes in, in, in Moodle um, fully integrates uh, into Moodle. Um, so I was going to do all that, but then uh, blow me, they, they beat me to it and did a far better job than I'm likely to do. Um, uh, so yeah, so it's planning. I suppose, um, but I'm a bad sample with planning uh, because mine tend to be a bit more ad hoc, um, but that's just the nature of the, of the private tuition uh, uh, game that I was in, I suppose. Uh, I think that, that answers was, your question at all. That was a bit of a ramble, sorry. Zuma. No, that was great. And I think one of the things that um, I really like in the things that you've written and, and said is that You've pointed out the importance of, of having a storyboard or doing a storyboard first rather than sort of reverse. And, and you can do the, like somebody can do the reverse design, backwards design, whatever. Yeah. But while you're doing the storyboard, to get back at how you get to the outcome that you want. Mm -hmm. And then the other thought was um, then, then being flexible 
to identify which tool is the best fit for purpose? Well, I think that's right. One of the things that I'm particularly passionate about is that, uh, and, and I think you know that, heard me say it or, or write it, and that's all about the learning. It's not about the teaching. And I think when it when you move online, and it's and it's, it's no criticism, and, it's, and we've all I've done it, is there's a new thing that you can um, do online. And you think, gosh, what can I use that in? Well, then it becomes about the teaching and not about the learning. Um, and um, uh, so, yeah, and I'm, and again, up, up here, I mean, it's, it's, it's standard stuff. Um, one of the teaching um, books, textbooks, kind of the set text almost is, is up there. It's, 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 it's recent Walker. And uh, in there, they've got a, a, a big table of the different online, it's a bit out of date now, I have to say, but a um, uh, big table of the different online teaching tools you can use and where they apply. And, um, and I think if you can do that as you're planning a lesson, and I do, I do genuinely do try to do it, as you're planning a lesson, if you can plan it out, um, uh, it's a lot more coherent, very unlike this sentence that I'm trying to articulate, it's a lot more coherent when you're actually presenting it online. And I think uh, certainly in the UK, one of the first things that, well, the first thing that would happen um, when you're um, uh, giving a lesson or about to give a lesson is, you, you know, if you're inspected or somebody comes along and sits in your lesson, the very first thing they will ask for is your lesson plan. Do you have your lesson plan, your short term, medium term plans? Can I see them, please? And there tends to be, I think because it's online, tends to be, well, I've got that for my face to face. I'll just put that online. And, and, it, and it's a different, it's a different, um, different discipline. The example, another example I give is it's a bit like, and perhaps we, we should say as teachers, yeah, it is acting. It's like acting, you know, acting on uh, a stage is very different to acting as I am, you know, in a, in a, you know, on a screen. Um, uh, and it's the same with, uh, you know, I think it's personal opinion, I think it's the same with teaching. Face to face is different when you're online. And then that's again different if you're creating some instructor-led training for um, uh, an online platform like Moodle. Uh, oh. So yeah, that's, that's such a great point because I okay. So when you said the difference, when I think about teaching face to face or even live, do you have a chance that you can at least read the audience and then they can send you chat or whatever? But if you're absolutely. developing for asynchronous on-demand delivery then it's you you have to think of how to engage your students in a completely different way yeah absolutely right and i think um uh in terms of uh when you're yeah you're right when you are uh certainly when you're teaching i found one of the one of the and it, and it sounds silly to say and it's obvious when you say but one of the things about being online uh, when you're teaching like this, so I'm there in a in a box, in a big blue button, is that I can't see what you're writing. So if you're right, one of the things I am quite passionate about, if any of my students ever saw this, they'd be rolling their eyes, um, is uh, as you're writing equations, maths, um, equivalence transformations is, is what I'm talking about. When you're writing down, uh, transforming some algebra, you know, I need to see that. And this says that this says everything about the teaching, not about the learning, doesn't it? But yeah, to make sure that you are being disciplined as you're writing it. Of course, when we were in the pandemic and we couldn't see anybody and be next to each other, I couldn't uh, couldn't judge what they were doing. So it was a lot of holding up sheets of paper or, or on a tablet with your finger on a tablet um, uh, through Zoom uh, and Big Blue Button. Um, that brings back so many memories. And my background is my first is geology. And so, and I started in engineering. So I remember in doing calculus and differential equations, all of the major errors were due to algebra, lack of discipline. <laughs> well, yeah, no, yeah, no, exactly right. I think, um, uh, 
and of course because I can't see what you're what you're doing easily um that was one of the things I found and just thinking for, for maths teaching that's that was that's the beauty of the, the, the stack system uh having a computer algebra system that you can integrate into Moodle um so yeah, I could sing the praises of that uh, particular particular. And I, I don't have shares in it, and they're not paying. <laughs> um, no, it's a, it's a fantastic system. Um, um, so yeah, I think that was the main thing that I found. Um, uh, and a lot of my teaching, um, most recently, has all been about confidence building. And I think that's another thing uh, that. Uh, Mm -hmm. The courses that I've built, um, uh, it's all about kind of guiding you through. And it, the way I teach face to face is it's all about kind of reinforcement, uh, scaffolding reinforcement and a tapering off so that I'm trying to give you the confidence to um, yeah, you know, have a go at a, a differential calculus question, something like that. And so you're not afraid uh, to, to, to try it and fail. And I think uh, when you're moving online, try and be as structured as possible in the course content uh, for kind of secondary students uh, and those in, in uh, for secondary education, which is where I spend most of my teaching time. Um, uh, so that it's confidence building. I mean, that said, my day job now is in private industry, and that's much more about bite sized focused oh super interesting -bound. so yeah so it's a very yeah. different i don't yeah so a, uh, i don't actually design the courses um so my role at the moment is development so i integrate moodle uh with uh, uh different um simulations in fact is, is oh what super I, interesting so. so is this like so is this training for corp corporate competencies or compliance what type of things it, it is. I mean, it's easier if I if I well, the company that I work for uh, is a company called Aviva, and um, what Aviva are all about is computer aided design. And oh. uh, what that means is, imagine that, um, and it's a it's a it's a project that we were working on uh, most recently. Imagine that we've uh, we've got a client who is creating a food manufacturing uh, plant. Then okay. uh, to design that plan, that can be done uh, on a computer, built in, in as a three-dimensional model. And uh, you can take that a step further and say, right, now we're designing that uh, plant. Well, we can train the operatives. Because we've got that model in the computer, we can train the operatives in um, extended reality, basically, um, which is one of my uh, particular wow. passions. As, as well. a side project, uh, which we can't do in a minute. But yeah, take that, uh, integrate that simulation. So you, could, you can almost kind of join that simulation of the processing plan as an, as an avatar. And you can instruct, create an instructional course, design a course to train operatives before they've got anywhere near the plant because it's oh, made I love that. that. So, yeah. So that that's a cool aspect. It could be implementation, it could be operations, it could be maintenance, any of that. I mean, the big thing here in the UK at the moment is the opening of the um, Elizabeth line. So it's a, um, a, a railroad that goes right from one side of London to the other. Oh, wow. Uh, for that, for, for, for training for that, uh, there was computer-based training all the way through to, um, uh, and I never went there, but I heard about it, and it, and it <laughs> sounds fairly James Bondish, but it's uh, <laughs> the, the Crossrail company uh, created a uh, building site simulation uh, in an office block, apparently. Anybody watching this, yeah, feel free to correct me, but as far as I'm aware, there was a, a kind of, you walked in and it was just like being underground. Uh, they'd simulated it completely. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, right. That reminds me, yeah, just like the, um, almost like, well, I guess it wouldn't be necessarily augmented re uh, reality, but it would at least be uh, immersive. Exactly right. It's absolutely right. So that's the, the the computer side of that 
is 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 what I get involved. Gosh, Aviva, are, 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 that's are super interesting. The 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 actual uh, training data from the simulation that gets fed back into uh, Moodle. In fact, it, uh, mm -hmm. no secret, that's the platform that we use. Um, and so my job is to integrate those simulations with with Moodle. Um, no, I love what you're and, saying because. One of the things I've been, I get involved with is, is promoting new technologies and scouting them out. And, and mm -hmm. a lot of new technologies have to do with collaboration and collaboration platforms, not just Teams, but Teams Plus, where you can actually collaborate with coding, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And, and um, one of the, a friend of mine, her name is Reka Patel, she's in Houston. She's designed a collaboration platform called Strathus. And she's incorporated Moodle with it because the idea is that to collaborate well, you and you're trying to do something like you're talking about, like you do the light rail training of all sorts of types or building a, a, a factory, you almost need to have this like almost pre-designed Moodle like training pieces or modules that you can go yeah. through on demand. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's very similar to the kind of work that we do. Yeah, exactly right. Um, now, and I think um, because I think the thing about Moodle, um, putting my sort of business hat on for the moment, is that uh, data protection is baked in. Um, um, uh, the kind of grade book, managing grades, all that's baked in. So. Uh, we can concentrate from the development side on uh, providing as much training, learning value as possible without having to worry about the nuts and bolts of managing reports and things like that. So that's that's what yes. I particularly like about Moodle, um, um, which again, I would say that, wouldn't I? Um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's the it's it's the it's the best one out of there. Um, uh, best kind of platform uh, as a as a virtual learning environment distinguishing it from a learning management system uh, mm -hmm. which to me I don't know uh, what your thoughts are on this Susan, but to me a learning management system is much more kind of the how ha, ha, has Susan got these qualifications and does, has she done this training and gone through this program right, is that right. much more a Moodle workspace type thing uh, but for a kind of a, 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 a learning environment in which we can bring in simulations and, you know, all these kind of things, um, that's, I think, Moodle for oh, my mind is definitely... I'm so glad you made that differentiation. That's exactly right. And, and, the, and the thing that's so interesting, too, about the um, idea of connectivism, which is at the very beginning of the philosophy of Moodle, mm -hmm. is utterly collaborative. And I was just reading about like differences between modernism and postmodernism. And then now there's like the idea that the new philosophy is, and I kind of hate this name because it reminds me of Facebook. But anyway, they said meta modernism. And they're not meaning Facebook, where they're talking about it's all collaboration. <laughs> we don't have to pay them money now. We've just said that. <laughs> <laughs> they own us. <laughs> Well, that's interesting. Well, I have to say, I've not come across that, and that that's that's quite interesting. Um, I think uh, for, uh, and that brings an interesting point. This is a discussion that we've I've had with colleagues fairly recently, and that is um, the equivalent of club. Gosh, thinking about teaching and um, and and it's the same as being on the stage, I suppose. Uh, is it's all about stagecraft and it's teaching technique and how to um, manage a classroom and how you can transfer that online. That's an, yeah, that's an interesting problem, uh, I think. And I don't know if you've got any thoughts on that um, because um, if you're, if you're um, uh, running instructor-led training, online with Moodle and Big Blue Button. Um, one of the issues I've had is uh, with uh, engagement above about six, six little windows on the, on the screen, quite honestly. Yeah. Um, and um, 
I think I've te- towards the end of the pandemic, what I tended to do, again, I'm staring out into the middle distance, just trying to think really of the of the, the what I did. Uh, towards the end, it was it was bringing folk together only when it was group work, because it all kind mm-hmm. of candor right at the start try to bring together folk in the same way as you would in a classroom and it didn't work the dynamic didn't oh work. i uh, totally agree with you, you almost yeah. okay yeah i keep thinking of malcolm Knowles' and idea of andragogy and the difference between mm-hmm. um, children learning and adults and mm-hmm. and how that applies to online and i think okay a it has to be relevant build on prior experience mm. and so it's all connected basically connectedness mm. and and it needs to satisfy a personal goal and well, so absolutely. that's where the focusing on getting the, the, the collaborative part mm. no exactly i think you're right and i don't know what your experience is but my experience tends to be so, and again, perhaps it's the kind of the, the, the tutoring just different to online classroom is that that personal goal is that the students that I would teach are stuck on something and they have that sort of primary motivation uh, and lack of fear to say, well, actually, this is what I'm stuck on. Can you help me? And very dem- good. They're very demanding. And <laughs> adult learners tends to be much more polite, I think, um, <laughs> on the whole. I'm horrible generalisation, I know. But, um, yeah, I think, I think you're absolutely right with, with, that, uh, with that analysis, absolutely spot on. Um, and I think when it's a, in a classroom, I can move around and I can, yeah, I can, I can yeah, co-locate. Um, but in, yeah, online... It, 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 that it was my, so, don't know if that says much more about me than it does about being online possibly but yeah I struggled oh. with it at the start I must admit well I like what you're saying especially the idea that it's kind of problem based so that the adult learner goes oh okay this is a problem that relates to my problem that I have now so mm-hmm. if I pay attention I will solve two problems at once and I'll advance toward two goals yeah no that's right and I think um, uh, for uh, and this, again, this says much more about the domain that I'm in, but for training uh, before I uh, st- started working for Aviva, I worked uh, for, it's, a, it's called the Sector Skills Council uh, in, in the UK. And so it's a kind of quasi governmental body and, uh, and it's skills for health. And it's um, motivated, and it's, it's since my, what I'm about to tell you is out of date because the, the organisation has, has changed um, since I was there. But what we were all about is making sure that, that we have the skills being built uh, in the UK to work in the health sector um, and um, making sure that the people who are working in the health sector are equally a, a skill. And so the movable that we uh, that we were using at the, at the time, um, that had an audience of about, uh, well, it's well over a million. It's how many people work in the NHS in the, uh, in the UK. Uh, I think it was about 1.25 million at the time. And um, uh, there, the motivation was, this is statutory and mandatory training you are doing. So if you haven't got that certificate, uh, you, that training is not being completed. You are not working on that ward, so you're not doing that ward. Oh, right, right. You be there. So yeah, so compliance. It was all about compliance. Mm-hmm. So not, not only was there an organisational driver to make sure that you've gone through that training, but of course there's also like I mean I can't work unless I exactly. yeah. yeah. unless I've done that training. This and is survival so, motivation. <laughs> absolutely. And so the, the kind of, and I didn't do it, but, you know, I, I salute my colleagues that I literally sat next to who, who <laughs> were the instructional designers to develop those courses. It was all about, uh, and again, focusing on the learning and, and not only uh, demonstrating that you have learned, but then you could relate your learning back. So that was... Um, uh, uh, again, that was a very different 
um, time bound way of presenting um, uh, presenting training in Moodle. Um, I love that. Yeah. Well, I, Ian, this has been really wonderful. It looks like we're kind of out of our time commitment. <laughs> but no, I really appreciate this. This oh, is wonderful. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Susan. Yeah, well, again, thank you for having me. And um, um, yeah, and I, yeah, I, I, I hope, um, hope that was a useful conversation. Thank you. Absolutely. And so I'll ask you to send me a few things that we can put in the show notes. And if you'd like me to link to anything that you'd like to, for people to know, um, that would be fantastic. I'm going to put this up on YouTube and also, and with uh, on my blog e-learning corgi <laughs> so yeah. oh definitely no so it's like place. I, shall, I shall uh yeah i shall i shall give you some good mentions no thank you yeah oh, thank think, you uh, um no is it worth mentioning that you've got your your book coming out uh, oh thank you for mentioning that thank yeah. you yes well it's been and and i just wanted to thank you for uh being the technical reviewer it was it's it was a big challenge to, to work on a guide for developing effective courses in Moodle 4.0. And so really, well, it, thank you. It, well, I enjoy, I enjoy it. Well, I had the easy job because uh, I could just sit and read and nod sagely and go, yes, I had so. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's fine. Uh, you were so helpful. <laughs> Well, no, it's a pleasure to help. No, I enjoyed reading it, and um, yeah, no, well done for that work as well. Uh, I know how hard it is to write a book, so no, well done to you. Um, no, thank you, and yeah, I'd like to promote anything that you're doing. So this is just wonderful. So no, anyway, yeah, I'll send you some links. No, thank you. As I say, perfect. Googling me is the easier way of doing it, really. So no, that's that's fine. Great. Well, I want to thank you again and thank you to our audience. And we've been listening to Ian Wild and talking about e-learning and Moodle and all sorts of ways to be effective. So thank you. Right, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Susan.